Network is your exclusive home for postseason baseball. It's Game 3 of the National League Championship Series between the L.A. Dodgers and the New York Mets. Hi again, everybody. Matt Vaskersian welcoming you to our exclusive postseason coverage on MLB Network. season is officially in full swing. Lineups and first pitch coming up next. is ready to erupt as their guys get set to take the field. Let's join public address announcer Mike Carlucci. And now, your 2017 New York Mets. Quickly now, we'll look at the two guys who'll get the ball here in game three. Time now to check out the lineup for the visiting Dodgers. Who's the one to watch, Dan? Well, I'm looking forward to watching Adrian Gonzalez. He's one of those guys you want at the plate in those big game-defining moments. He's such a clutch hitter. I love watching him in those situations, and hopefully we'll have that in this game as well. Jacob DeGrom will do the pitching in game three of the series. Harold, what do you got? Well, Matt, I, I love watching this guy pitch. I went back, looked at the video of his last game. He pitched into the sixth inning, threw the ball great, had electric stuff when he needed to, pitched out of some tough jams, and pitched well enough to get the W. So I think we'll see tonight really firsthand what kind of pitcher he is. We'll get to see it firsthand. All right, time for the majestic defensive alignment for the Mets. And I'm looking down there at Miguel Cabrera. Can you believe this guy was a shortstop when he broke in? Yeah, skinny 20-year-old playing shortstop for the Marlins. He's moved around the diamond now, playing on the corners a lot. But obviously the big fella, he's such a great hitter. He's one of the best hitters in the game. That's why you want him in the game. But he doesn't hurt you on the defensive side either. Swung on and missed, and there is your first out of the contest. Really impressive pitching right there. Sometimes as a pitcher, you can get frustrated when you make a good pitch and you don't get that ball from the umpire. But what does he do? He comes back with a good pitch and gets the strike. Bases are empty, one man out. Swing and a ball hit softly on the ground. But this will get foul. It's a ball and two strikes. A cool 47 degrees tonight at first pitch. Here he comes on a ball and two strikes. Again, he sends it out of play. Another 1-2 delivery. Off-speed pitch in the dirt as he takes it for a ball. One out, nobody on. Hit hard back up the middle. And that'll find its way into center field for a one-out hit. 
Well, it looks like just a ground ball base hit in the box scores, but man, that ball is hit hard up the middle. He's going to do well for himself. He stays consistent and keeps that approach. Into the box now, Corey Seager, pitch out, nothing doing. So let's take a look at our umpire and crew in this one, working the plate, Rusty Valentine. Well, Matt, Rusty Valentine, don't you love that name, by the way? Hey, look, he likes to call tall zone. He's going to go up high, and he's going to call on the knees. On the corners, he's a little tighter, but if you go up and down, you're going to get a call from Rusty. He's set, and the 2-1 pitch. Fastball misses in the dirt as he tried to get him to chase the low one. Now a throw over and a dive, but he's back. Runners on first with one down. Who thought he had ball four, but instead it's strike two. That pitch is in triple digits. I think he had to take that one because I'm not even sure he saw it. Here comes the payoff pitch. Swing and a miss on the fastball that time. Out number two. Here's Franklin Gutierrez. He takes his first cuts in this one with a man at first and two away. Here comes the payoff pitch. Swing and that's hit out of play up into the plaza level. The payoff pitch one more time. And another foul ball. And this is swung on and missed. Might have even been a foul tip that's held on to, but either way, the side is retired. Dodgers leave one, and now the Mets offense will go to work for the first time. No score. Giancarlo Stanton now. Career line against Greinke. Four hits in 16 tries. He also has one home run. One and two. Here it comes. Swung on and missed. Really fooled him that time for the first out. Another strikeout for him on the mound. And boy, is it fun to watch him go about his business. Ah, no doubt, Matty. He's one of my favorites, mostly because of his stuff. You know, he can absolutely dominate on any given day because of what he offers up there. It's just nasty. There aren't many hitters that like to see this guy on the mound. In now, Yoenis Cespedes. 1-1 one, one pitch is a slider that's cut on and missed for strike two. Here he comes on a ball and two strikes. And a fastball in the dirt that's taken for a ball. Bottom of the second here with no score. Fastball and ooh, that ran in and drilled him. Yeah, there are a couple of things you don't want to do as a visiting pitcher. Never give the home crowd a reason to get involved early and don't put guys on base to ignite a big inning. Well, mission accomplished on both fronts. We'll see how he responds. So a runner on first with one out now. And standing in here is the very dangerous third baseman, Evan Longoria. Runner's going. Hit swung on and missed the throw. And it's far too late as he steals second with ease. 
You know, I like the aggressiveness there. They haven't cracked the scoreboard at this point, so it's clear they're trying to manufacture something by forcing the action. We'll see if it works out for them. One out and a runner on second base. Hit to third, loved by Turner. On to first and a sigh of relief as Longoria has retired easily for the second out. Batting seventh, Patrick, Gary Carter. At the plate, Gary Carter. Opportunity for him here to pick up that runner from second with two away. Runner in scoring position at second with two down. There's a swing, and he sends a ball high in the air into left field. Floyd going back on it, and this one is gone. A home run. It's a two-run shot to straightaway left. His first homer here in the series as the Mets are out in front now, two to nothing. I think if this pitch would have been a little higher and in on his hands, it would have been effective. But he left this one belt high. Big mistake. He's a guy that will feast on belt high pitches on the inner half, which is pretty obvious now. Into the box now, Christian Yelich. And this one's up around the eyes, two and one. Into the windup, here's the two and one pitch. That's ball and a three. neck high fastball that time. It's clear he just hasn't been able to find any rhythm out there. Pretty much unable to hit any of his spots. And now he's at three and one, and he's put him into another great hitting count. Fastball in there, three and two. Bases are empty here with two men out. And he lost him here on 3-2 as that pitch misses. It's ball four. What's the saying? Uh, when you find yourself in a hole, the first thing you should do is stop That's digging. Hitter. Well, the guy on the bump Justin obviously hasn't heard that Morneau. one. Here's Justin Morneau. He takes his first cuts in this one with a man at first and two away. Here comes the 3-1 pitch. And he misses again, ball four. And that's back-to-back -back guys now that have reached base via the base on ball. Yeah, the pitching coach would hate to go to the bullpen this early in the game, but sometimes you have no choice. On the flip side, he might just get in his face a little bit out there, try to challenge him, wake him up from his funk. Either way, we'll see how it works. Digging in to try it again. Jose Altuve. 0 for 1 for him here in this one. Two down, runners at first and second. Down the third baseline. Played on the backhand. And he'll go the short way to retire the side. But the Mets do strike for two, both coming on this two-run home run. We played two. It's now 2-0 New York. Leading off the inning, Yosmani Grandal, as they'll look to get something going here and even this game up. And low and inside with a fastball as he's got a hot footed out of there. Most good pitchers know that they have to work inside and sometimes even come off the plate to keep hitters from getting comfortable up there. I think that was part of the intent with that last pitch. Pitch on the way. On a good pitch there, had him stretching to get out there, and it's two and two now. Well, as demonstrated there, that's a tough pitch to do anything with. 
<laughs> yeah, good luck. But hey, a high fastball all of a sudden becomes really dangerous for a pitcher if it's not spotted above the zone. A little height difference makes all the difference. Pulls this one into the air out into right field. Therefore, it is Stanton, and he's got it for the first out. Batting ninth, the right fielder number 66, Yasiel Puig. And now is Yasiel Puig. Here it is on three and one. And he takes ball four. So a good job out of the nine hole in getting on base as we go back to the top of the order. Man, when you don't get a call on a pitch Dodgers. that good, you Jackie have to wonder, baseman. maybe it's personal. Jackie you can't Robinson. blame him for being angry, but he's got to find a way to move on and focus on the next batter. Striding in once again, Jackie Robinson. 0 for 1 here in the early going. ready to deliver the full count pitch but he won't draw a throw that's taken for ball four and it's first and second now with one away and that's two free passes in the third inning alone so you have to wonder if maybe it's something mechanical or if it's just psychological got to get back on track here now to the plate Cliff Floyd one for one after a single his first time up Here's the 2-1. And he misses again, ball three. Call didn't go his way on 2-1, and one, but it's important here on 3-1 and one to still make a quality pitch. You have to have the mindset that you're still the one in the driver's seat. He's set. Here's the 3-1. Swung on and missed. Outclassed by that fastball for a strike. I think it's safe to say he wasn't ready for the fastball. Yeah, and they set him up with that curveball on the pitch before, and that one, they just blew right by him. And they could go either way now, I suppose. He's set. Here's the three and two. And that misses. Ball four, and he's going to need to settle down in a hurry now because he's in a peck of trouble. That's a big no-no. He obviously had to work carefully with two men on, but he did not want to walk him to load the bases. Now he's really got his work cut out for him. We'll see how he fares here. Digging in for his second at-bat, Corey Seager. 0 for 1 for him here in this one. He's set. Here's the 2-2. And a wave and a miss on a ball that was way out of the strike zone. There are two away now. I'm really impressed by that strikeout, and I'll tell you why. He should have gotten a call on a pitch before, and it looked like he got squeezed a little bit. In a bases-loaded situation, that can drive a guy nuts, drive you crazy. What I loved is he didn't let him take it out of his game, and he came back with another good pitch and got the punch out. A really nice job of taking it one pitch at a time. Gets the sign. Here comes the 2-1. Can't find the zone there, and it's 3-1. and one. You can bet he's salivating a little in the box right now. He likes to drive in runs, and he's got a great situation and count to do that right here. Already 24 pitches to this point in the inning. Here's a shot to left field and deep. Look at this. Gone all the way into the upper deck. So he promptly unloads the bases with that one. His first homer so far in the series. And it'll leapfrog him out in front to a 4-2 lead. Certainly a tape measure shot there as we take a look at it with our show track technology. 111 miles an hour was the exit velocity, so it comes as no surprise that it carried as far as it did. Standing in now, Justin Turner. Outside with the fastball as the count moves to 2-1 and one now. It's one thing to get hit around, but it's far worse when you're getting yourself into trouble by not throwing strikes. 
every pitcher's been there, but it doesn't make it any less frustrating or unacceptable. Two balls and a strike. Here it is. Shin high fastball that time. Ball three. Three and one. Here it is. Pulled high in the air out to left field. Cespedes is there. And that's the third out. But the damage done for the Dodgers, and it came on the grand slam. We play two and a half, and L.A.'s taken a 4-2 lead. Here's Adrian now. And, Dan, I'm sure the starter on the mound would like to hit the rewind button on that last inning. Oh, no doubt about that, Mac. That was a really rocky frame, but clearly not enough to chase him from this game. We'll see if he's still shaking a bit or if he's able to put this behind him. Now here's the pitch. And he lays off there, ball four. So the leadoff man is on here to begin stanza number four. And that's what you want from your leadoff hitter. Shows some great patience and discipline, making the pitcher labor to start the game. The result is a leadoff walk and a chance to make some early noise. Stepping in and ready for another shot, Harmon Killebrew comes into this at bat 0 for 1 in the ballgame. And the pitch on two and one. Now a swing and a chopper foul right at home plate. Been a real big struggle for him so far on the mound. Four runs and only three innings. So it'll be interesting to see if he can settle in at all and make some adjustments or if this start will continue to run downhill. And here's a ball hit in the air. And this will be taken in by Longoria for the first out. The batter, Catherine Yasmani Grandal. Here's the catcher, Yasmani Grandal. He's 0 for 1 thus far. Both teams with just two hits apiece thus far. Here's a high foul ball as it finds a lucky fan in the upper deck for a souvenir. A swing and a miss for out number two and a ball he had no chance of making contact with. I think he had his mind made up. He was swinging the bat and trying to protect before the ball even left the pitcher's hand. That pitch wasn't even close. He would have needed a flagpole to hit that one. In now, Yasiel Puig. And that slider's almost in the dirt. You know, guys, these hitters have had some great looks at that slider so far, and clearly they're all on the same page. The plan is simple. Lay off that slider and make him bring up something straight in the strike zone. And he takes ball four, so a good job out of the nine hole in getting on base as we go back to the top of the order. Up next for the Dodgers... Second baseman, Jackie Digging Robinson. in once again, Jackie Robinson. Two men on, two away here in the fourth. Trying to hang a zero, here's the pitch. And a wild pitch here as this one's to the backstop. And he is safe at third as he moves up on what's likely to be ruled a wild pitch. Well, he's just lost complete control of the baseball in this inning. Two walks and now a wild pitch. You know he's talking to himself in his head. And I can't imagine he's saying any real nice things either. He's set and the 2-1 pitch. On the ground up the middle. And that's through into center field. Base hit. And the runner from third crosses the plate. And he will beat the tag. Safe at the plate. 
The way the game is played today, the leadoff guy, he drives in two runs, and you don't think a whole lot of it because he's now one of the guys that's an RBI producer. This is not your dad's old game. This is the new school. A couple of righties starting to loosen now in the bullpen. Standing in now, Cliff Floyd. Fastball misses in the dirt as he tried to get him to chase the low one. to first and he'll get dirty but he's back in safely and another throw over and the runner back safely two balls and a strike here it comes and there's one well above the zone for a ball well, he's really got to get it together awful quick because he's going to be out of there. That bullpen is getting hot in a hurry. Here it is on three and one. And he misses again. Ball four. And his control is really letting him down now. He did not want to let the hitter off the hook with two outs, and now he's got a runner in scoring position to deal with. Corey Seager. Here's Corey Seager. He struck out twice thus far, so we'll see if he can fare any better here. From the belt, the pitch. And he struck him out, his eighth punch out of the ball game, and that one ends the inning. So two runs on just one lone hit, no errors, and two men left on base. On now to the bottom half of inning number four. The Dodgers lead it six to two. In is the third baseman, Evan Longoria. And through five turns at bat, they've only mustered a total of three hits. Not terrible, but they're certainly not firing on all cylinders. Well, it's getting a little bit too late in this game if this continues like this. In today's game, with so many dominant bullpen arms, you certainly don't want to wait until the eighth or ninth to try to wake the bats up. Granky ready now, the 1-1. One -one. And he comes back with a fastball, one and two now. Trying to send him packing for the second time. A swing and a shot hit down the corner. Nearly a big fly to start the inning instead of foul ball. The one and two pitch. On the ground to the left side. Scooped up on the backhand. Throw, got him, and that's a gorgeous play. The catcher. All right, eight. so let's turn to show track Gary for a more in-depth look at that one. Good reaction, great range, and a nice backhanded stop, and the jump throw with a lot behind it all the way across the infield for the out. The numbers don't lie, and that was pretty spectacular. Into the box, Gary Carter. And there's ball two now. Bases are empty, one man out. Look out, a fastball up near his dome, and that'll wake you up a bit. He went deep earlier, so that might have been a little bit of a message they were trying to send to get him off the plate. At the very least, they're clearly trying to get him from getting his arms extended again. Now here's one hit in the air to the right side. But this is back into the seats of foul ball. Something has to give. Here's the payoff pitch. Inside as he nearly got him and it's ball four. Well, the reason power hitters generally draw more walks than other guys is exactly what we saw right there. Pitchers work around them and nibble the corners a lot more so they don't get burned. He made some good pitches, but he just couldn't get him to chase enough out of the zone. Digging in to try it again. Christian Yelich. Couple of walks for him thus far. Two 
runs, three hits, and no errors on the Mets line score so far. Swing and a miss on the changeup, and there are two gone. The great equalizer, the changeup. That was a really good job of getting him to offer at that one out of the zone, and it was all set up by the fact that he got ahead in the count and forced the hitter to have to protect. That's the name of the game. Standing in now, Justin Morneau. Lined hard toward right center. And Morneau's aboard, it's a base hit. So now they'll have runners on the corners with two away. Well, this ball's hit off the wall. He hit it awfully hard. Now, I thought it was a good move to stop because a lot of times you go, oh, he's dogging it. It looked like he was going pretty good. But I think they're going to throw him out. Good read to get back to first. Some action in the Dodger bullpen now as it appears they have both a lefty and a right-hander up and throwing. Stepping in now, Jose Altuve. And he missed with it. It's one and two. Well, that two-seam fastball ran a little too much off the plate, but now that sets him up to work with something away and maybe even an off-speed pitch. Here's the one and two. Hit hard on the ground to the right. And a diving effort there, but will come up empty. It's a base hit. And the runner from third scores as they try and work their way back into this one. It's now a 6-3 contest. Francisco Lindor. In now, Francisco Lindor. And he struck him out, his eighth punch out of the ball game, and that one ends the inning. Mets played a run on a couple of hits. On to the seventh now in game three. LA's on top, six to three. Kenley Jansen enters the game to finish this one off here in the bottom of the ninth. Number 74, Kenley Jansen. Digging in once again, Justin Morneau. Couple of singles to his credit thus far. He's set. Here's the three and two. Swung on and fouled as it looked to make it all the way up into the concourse area. Squared that one up just a little late. Another full count pitch home. And he can only battle for so long as he's finally set down here after an eight pitch at bat. This is the pitch I think we'll see a lot from him in this game. The cutter darting in on the hitters in the opposite batter's box. It can be a real effective pitch when it's located well. And that one was right there. Here's the second baseman, Jose Altuve. It was an RBI single for him in his last plate appearance. And he takes ball two, and it's two and one. Bases are empty, one man out. Two and two. He's set, here's the two, two. Mind to the right side. A leaping try, but it's out of his reach and into the outfield. Well, he's got some kind of eyesight. He recognized that pitch early, stayed back, and just drove it the other way. Francisco Lindor. 
digging in the switch hitter, Francisco Lindor. He'll look to bounce back after striking out his last time up. Ready with the one and one. Softly hit out to short. And that finds some outfield grass. It's a base hit. Well, we see a lot of line drives from this guy, but because he keeps that bat in the plane so long, he picks up cheap hits like this soft liner. He's just a good hitter. Into the box now, Miguel Cabrera. 0 for 4 with a strikeout thus far. One one pitch coming now to Cabrera. Swing and a liner towards second. The second for one. On to first, and he rolls the double play ball to end it here as this ball game is over. Hey, there was no reason to panic. He gave up a hit, but he comes right back and gets a double play to end this thing. Great resiliency right there to secure the save and the victory for the team. And there's no better time of year to come up big for your team than in the postseason. And that's exactly what this man did. He's our tops player of the game. Yeah, no time like the postseason to come through and lift your team to victory. He was certainly a big factor here, and it was pretty cool to see. And tonight's comes to an end, 6-3 to three the final. The Dodgers have taken a 2-1 lead in this league championship series. Jacob deGrom permitted six earned runs to come across in the losing effort. So that's a wrap here tonight. For my partners in the booth, Harold Reynolds and Dan Plezak, and our entire crew, I'm Matt Vaskersian. You've been watching MLB Network. Good night, everybody.